So welcome back to our session. So today we are going to discuss about types of DNA. Let's get into the topic. So the first type we are going to see about linear DNA. So as this name suggests, it will be linear. And also it is associated with the proteins. So we have already seen the structure of the chromatin, right? So it consists of a protein called histones. So when this get condensed, it will looks like this. So this consists of double helix. Okay. So the first thing about linear DNA is it is found in the nuclei of eukaryotic cells. So the second thing, it has free ends, right? So see the ends here. So it is free. It has free ends. Okay. So the third thing is about protein. So it is associated with proteins. Okay. And it is organized into a number of chromosomes. Okay. So each chromosome containing a long DNA double helix. So each chromosome contains long DNA double helix. So we have already seen that what is double helix, right? So it will be like this. So we have already seen this in the structure of DNA. Fine. So this is all about the linear DNA. Okay. So it is found in the eukaryotic cells and it has free ends and it is associated with the proteins called histones. Okay, so that's why it shows a bead-like structure in the chromatin. So when it gets condensed to form the chromosome and then it has the double helix shape. Okay, so coming to the circular DNA. So this circular DNA is found in the prokaryotic cell. So not only in the prokaryotic cell, but also in the eukaryotic, especially in the mitochondria. You know, so if we take mitochondria, so let me draw the structure of the mitochondria. Okay. Consists of folds. Okay. So this is the matrix, right? So inside the matrix, so there will be the DNA in the circular form. Yes, right? So in the eukaryotic, mitochondria has its own DNA. Okay. It is also found in plastids. So in the plants, so for example, there are the three types of plastids. One is chloroplast. So the chloroplast has its own DNA, which is in the circular form. Okay. So as this has a circular form, it has jointed ends. Yes, right. So it does not have free end. It has a jointed ends. Okay. And it is not associated with proteins okay but the linear dna has associated with the proteins and then this prokaryotic dna is a single chromosome okay it is not arranged in a large number of chromosome so we have already studied in our lower class right so this prokaryotic cells has nucleoid not nucleus or chromosomes right so the prokaryotic dna is a so it's just quite opposite to the linear DNA. So this is found in the prokaryotic cells and also in the eukaryotic cells, eukaryotic organisms and like mitochondria inside the cell and also in the plastids and it has jointed ends because it is a circular DNA and it is not associated with the proteins and it is a single chromosome. Now let's go to the next step of the DNA. So the next is single standard DNA. So this was observed by the scientist's name, Sen Schimmel, in the year 1958. So he observed this single standard DNA in the bacteriophage. So it is called as phage 174. Okay. So actually this bacteriophage has a spherical shape. Actually it will be looking like this. So, yeah. So, this is the phage 
1.174. So, this has a single standard DNA. Okay. So, this is the, so this was observed by the scientist named Senshima. So, the next thing is double standard DNA. So, we know this obviously, right? It consists of double stands. Okay. So, which runs from 3 dash to 5 dash and 5 dash to 3 dash. Obviously, it is a having two anti parallel stands. Okay. So, this is made up of deoxy ribonucleotide. So, the first point about the double standard DNA it consists of two anti parallel strands of deoxyribose or we can write it as deoxyribonucleotides. So actually it is found in almost all the cells. So found in all cells. Okay. So especially which possess DNA as a genetic material except in some viruses. So this is all about single standard and double standard DNA. So the next thing is tropic and genetic DNA. So actually, for example, if we take the ciliate organisms like, you know, uh, paramecium, okay. So let me draw the structure of the paramecium. So it will be like this, you know. So it consists of ciliates. So it consists of all the stuffs like food vacuole, cilia, contractile vacuole. So here, let me draw only this DNA. Actually, it consists of two things, you know. So this, this one is macronucleus and this one is micronucleus. So the ciliates like paramecium have both tropic and genetic DNA in the macro and micronucleus respectively. Here this macronucleus is called as tropic. This micronucleus called as genetic. So which means this tropic you know the macronucleus controls the vegetative function. And this, obviously, this micronucleus is going to control the reproductive function. So, the example for this tropic and genetic DNA is a paramecium. Okay. So, it consists of two nucleus that is macro and micro. Okay. So, which is called as tropic and genetic. So, this macro will be controlling the function of vegetative function and this micronucleus will be controlling the function of reproduction. So, this is all about tropic and genetic DNA. Okay, so this is very interesting. So, we have different forms of DNA, right? So, we have already seen about uh, Watson and Crick model. So, that Watson and Crick model is a B form of DNA. So, like that, there are A, B, C, D and also Z form of DNA. So, the first thing I have to fill the forms, okay, different forms of the DNA in the tablet corner. So, I am going to fill this for my comfortability like I am going to start with B, Z, A, C and D. Okay. So, the first thing we are going to see about handedness. Handedness of helix. Okay. So, what is meant by handedness? So, for example, let's take our right hand. Okay. Like this. So, let me draw the hand. So, this is my thumb finger. Okay. So, the remaining is here. Here, this B form is called as right-handed. Which means, if we keep this right hand like this, we can get the fold in this form. Okay. So, the DNA, the DNA in the B form will be like this. Which is known as right-handed. So, if we take Z form of DNA... It is left-handed. So, the same thing. If we take this, when we take our left hand. Okay, so this is my thumb and these are my remaining fingers. So, that the DNA will be in this form. Okay, so you can see the difference. So, this is here 
okay if we take the left hand the folds will be the coiled structure will be in the left hand side so then the handedness of helix in the a form will be right handed so i'm just writing right and c will also have right handed form and d also will have right handed form so the next thing is pitch pitch of helix per turn okay so what is meant by pitch of the helix so we know the uh, watson and crick model of dna right so the dna let me draw the dna like this okay okay so consider this is the dna pitch of helix per turn in the sense so from here so from here to here so this area so this area will be different in uh, other forms of the dna if we take the b form we have already know about it so it is about 34 armstrong so if we take the z it will be 46 armstrong and for the a it will be about 25 armstrong and for the c it will be about 30 and finally at the d it will be 24 armstrong the next thing is about diameter of helix so the di diameter of the helix in the sense so again let me draw the dna so this this area is called as the diameter of the helix so for the watson and crick model it is about can you remember it it is about 20 armstrong and for the z it will be 18 armstrong and for the a it will be 26 armstrong and for the c will be 19 armstrong so and finally in the d they haven't found about the diameter of the helix so we can put the slash here so the next thing is about stability here in the b form it is highly stable and also it is physiologically in the active form and remaining is at a uh, c and also d is unstable so this is all about unstable is it a c and also d so the next thing about base pair per turn of helix base pair bp okay base pairs per turn of helix so what does mean by base pairs per turn of helix if we take the dna so there will be nucleotides that is base pairs right this is one turn right from here to here yes in this area how many base pairs are there so that is the base pair turns of helix per turn okay so in the b form it has 18 sorry it's not 18 it is about 10 so here it is 12 and for the a it is 11 and in the c it is about 9.33 and finally in the d it is 8 and the last thing okay about the forms of dna the distance between two base pairs distance between two base pairs okay we know that right so so this is the dna so for example consider this is the two base pairs so between that what is the distance okay so this b form has 3.4 am strong and this z has 3.8 am strong and a has 2.5 am strong and c has 3.3 am strong and finally d has 3.03 am strong okay so these are the different forms of dna and these are the difference between all the forms of dna fine let's move to the next coding and non coding dna so actually depending on the ability to form functional or non functional products so the, this dna uh, have two types of segments you know for example uh, let me draw the dna like this okay so Consider this as a DNA. Okay, so this is three dash to five dash and five dash to three dash. So I am drawing this uh, DNA uh, for our comfortability. Okay, so that we can understand this easily. Okay, so this has two stands, two anti-parallel stands. It has some region called introns and exons. You know, consider consider this as. so consider this two region as exons 
other stuff so this 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 region is called as a introns so this exons is called as coding dna this introns is called as non coding dna which means this exons regions only is going to convert it into mrna and finally into the proteins okay so this introns is not going to form any proteins so first let's uh, speak about uh, coding dna uh, it consists of coding dna sequence obviously so coding dna has coding dna sequences so in the uh, coding dna sequence there are two types so the first thing is protein coding sequences protein coding sequences uh, codes for all proteins okay this will codes for all proteins except histones and then the next thing is non protein coding sequence this sequences will code for tRNA rRNA and also histones so in this we have to be very clear about or uh, what is coding and non coding dna okay which is uh, exons and introns so exons is going to uh, code for all the proteins introns it, it is a non coding part which is non functional okay now let's speak about non coding so this non coding uh, dna uh, in eukaryotes if we take eukaryotes a larger part of dna is non coding okay so in the eukaryote non coding is greater when compared to the coding which means it does not form any functional product so the next thing about non coding sequences is that they often possess repeated sequence so repeated sequence so i'll tell you what is meant by repeated sequence repeated sequence or it is also called as repetitive dn so most of them have this uh, fixed position mostly this non coding sequences will be in the fixed position but some of them move from one place to another okay so if it moves from one place to another place then it is called as a mobile sequence this mobile sequence is called as jumping genes or transposons so you have to be very very clear in this part so the coding uh, and non coding dna okay when we speak about this coding dna sequence in prokaryotic this uh, non coding dna is very small this coding has two types that is protein coding sequence and non protein uh, coding sequence so which codes for all proteins except histones but the non protein coding sequence will codes for the rna rrna and also histones coming to the non coding uh, sequences so the eukaryotic has large part of non coding sequence which does not form any functional products which means it does not going to form mrna or proteins which means transcription and translation is not going to happen okay so in that it has the non coding part has repetitive sequence you know um, this repetitive sequence is also called as repeated sequences so when this sequences move from one place to other place which means mobile sequence right so this mobile sequence is called as jumping genes or transposons let's move to the next yes coming to the uh, repetitive dna let me draw the dna here okay it has some base pairs right let me write a t g g or a and c okay so this is one set again it is repeating a c okay so it is repeated right a t g g a c again it is repeated okay obviously the complementary base pairs will be there in the other stand so if there is a t will be here if there is t a will be here okay so this is gets repeated okay so it is a part of the dna which contains the same sequence it contains the same sequence of nitrogen bases 
right so these are the nitrogen bases repeated more than once in genome bases repeated more than once in genome yes okay what is meant by genome you know genome is an entire set of dna found in a cell okay so that is called as a genome next coming to the satellite dna it is highly repetitive so it is highly repetitive dna and it is found in uh, centromeres and also heterochromatin obviously it uh, cannot transcribe or translate okay so we know what is meant by translation and uh, uh, transcriptions okay we are going to see this in the uh, next tour for the slides okay now let's get into the next type of the dna uh, coming to the micro satellite dna the, there is no much in, much about this uh, micro satellite uh, actually it is a short segment of dna okay so we can write it as short segment of dna obviously it is going to repeat the nitrogen bases but it is few you know with the few base pairs like one to six repeats this a uh, few base pairs will be repeated multiple times okay in a particular genomic location so this is all about micro satellite DNA. Then coming to the mini satellite DNA, so here there will be about uh, 11 to 16 base pairs get repeated. So this is highly variable and it is very, very, very specific for each individual. This is highly variable and specific for each individual. So as it has a specific you know, for each individual, it can be used in the DNA fingerprinting. I think uh, you all know about this uh, DNA fingerprinting. So, this was discovered by the scientist called Jeffrey, you know, Jeffrey in the year 1985. DNA fingerprinting is nothing but it is a laboratory technique used to determine the identity of a person. Identity of a person by what? On the nucleotide sequence. Okay, it is based on the nucleotide sequence of certain uh, region of human DNA. So, that are very unique to the individual. So, that is called as a DNA fingerprinting. So, actually this uh, uh, repetitive DNA has some different types, you know. So, these are some of the types of repetitive DNA. So, what are the types in the sense? Satellite DNA, micro satellite and mini satellite DNA. So, all these are the types of repetitive DNA. Yes, coming to the central dogma of molecular biology, okay, so which is very, very, very important. So, what is meant by central dogma, you know, it is like a flow of information. So, here is the definition, it is the flow of information from DNA to mRNA, so that is messenger RNA and then decoding the information present in mRNA in the formation of polypeptide chain or protein. So, protein is also called as polypeptide chain so, or protein. There is an information in the DNA. So, that information is going to transfer from DNA to mRNA and then mRNA to the protein. Okay. So, we will see that one by one. So, the first A, one way flow of information. So, this was proposed by Crick in the year 1958, okay. So, he proposes unidirectional flow of information, you know. So, this from DNA, mRNA, so then the DNA is converted into mRNA, okay. So, this is called as transcription. From the mRNA, it is uh, directed into protein. This is called as translation. So, Crick have proposed this unidirectional flow of information. So, it is called as unidirectional flow of information. Sorry, it's not trans transcription P. Okay. So, the next thing is circular flow of information. So, this was proposed by Kamoner in the year 1968. Okay. So, he proposed the circular form. So, circular form in the sense, so DNA is there from the DNA 
information is passed to the RNA and then to the protein. From the protein then it is to the RNA and finally to the DNA. So he proposed this. So the scientist name Kamonen in the year 1968. So finally coming to the C that is reverse flow of information. I forgot to tell you one more point here. So here, so the DNA is can replicate, okay, replicated to form a new DNA. Fine, so this is called as replication. Coming to the reverse flow, so this was uh, reported by the scientist called Temin in the year 1970 and Baltimore the year 1970. Okay, so, uh, they reported that double standard RNA of raw sarcoma virus, you know, raw sarcoma virus, which is called as RSV. Okay, so this operates a central dogma reverse, reverse. Okay, so it is like DNA is there, so there will be the replication. And it has reverse, that is transcription. And RNA, and finally protein by the process called translation. So, this is all about the central dogma of uh, molecular biology. So, there, so there are three main processes that is uh, replication, transcription, and translation. Okay. So, we'll see this one of the processes in our next video. Thank you.